Hello, everybody. I hope the apocalypse is treating you well. Um, I have a special guest today. This is Ben from the Downsize at Battle Report show. Uh, ben, if you want to introduce <laughs> Um Basically, we've decided to team up and rate some admirals. So the first part of this video is going to be here on my channel on Irish Mad Cat. And then the second part where we rate the Imperials will be on the Downsizer channel. We're only going to go with the Galactic Civil War factions uh, this time around, but we're going to, maybe when we have some more clones and some more separatists, we'll, we'll give them a go as well. Um, but I'm very excited to be teaming up with Downsize It, so hopefully everybody enjoys. Um, so if we start out with with the old, we'll do it old alphabetically. How do you find Admiral Akbar in terms of ratings, Ben? Well, Admiral Akbar, I think he's near the top. He's actually my number three uh, commander when it comes to the rebels. Even though he's still the most expensive rebel commander, I think it is well worth it. Yes. When you tech towards uh, Akbar, the ability just to get two extra red dice. When you're going out the side and rebels like to circle and broadside anyway, it can just be so powerful. And it's such a classic admiral too. And he works very well. I don't think there's really any weaknesses to Akbar. I rate him very high. I, I, I actually have him as two mm -hmm. just because he, he does so much. He fits in everywhere. He's yes. like, like with most of the rebel admirals you're kind of like um you're kind of like i need big ships or i need small ships or i need something like that whereas with akbar you're kind of like uh he'll just make anything it's not a dr75 exactly he'll exactly. even make use of dr75s <laughs> um and then for the Ak admirals that do make fit in anywhere like your dudanas and your agates they their effect is like agate is like focused on one ship. Dudana's mm -hmm. effect is minimal. His main advantage was always that he was cheap. But mm -hmm. Akbar just turns everything into, into a, a crazy, crazy murder machine. Like yes. murdering CR-90s, the murdering uh, MC-80s. And even if you see me on Kravok's channel, the turning Nebulon Bs. Oh, I know. Yeah, I loved, I loved his uh, Akbar Nebulon B list he came up with. That was kind of unique. I'm still not sure it's a good idea. <laughs> but it can be fun though, right? <laughs> yeah. One, one maybe might work. Yeah. But like three, I'm like still unconvinced. I think he's just trying to make rebel architons. Um, right. Yeah. Although it, they almost already have it. The uh the the worst, or I should say the best. I mainly play Imperials, but my worst nightmare is seeing an Akbar list with several MC30 scout frigates across the board for me. They're so fast, so maneuverable, and they hit like a truck, considering their size. And they always wreck me every time I play them. Yeah, and they've gotten more. They've gotten harder to pin down in one point yes. five. Yes, yes, evades um, are so much better now. And they're they're more and more common because they just eat onagers for breakfast. Yes, um, they do. <laughs> they you just can't get, they actually they, kill foresight at extreme range. No, you you'll get one shot on it, and then it's on your side, and you can't do anything about it anymore. And it's <laughs> blood. Um, yes. Yeah. And so you have them as three. I have them as a two. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. So redfish, as they call them, doing quite well. So then, Mr. Radis, how do we feel about Mr. Russian Dolls himself? This one was tough for me. I started to rank him actually pretty high, uh, actually near the two or one spot, but I put him back down to four. The reason why I did that is because Radis is his gimmick that he can do can be so extremely powerful and just win you games. And it's so hard for people that are not prepared to counter it, but it is a one shot gimmick. There's pretty much one way to do it to make it really good, but it's really, really good and really powerful. But I raked him at four and not any higher because it really is just a one gimmick you can do. And that's about it. And that is that is fair enough. That is fair enough. I actually have them as one. Yeah, um, I was just, toying with it. I was just ah, I was toying with it. <laughs> just the amount of fear he puts. Yes, in opposing people. It's like ridiculous. Um, 
this is the thing, he can be anywhere. Um, and literally, like, he does what Medin can do, except he does it better mm-hmm. without as much thought or without as much planning. Um, and, like, he is... He's very much focused on what he drops, but what he drops, like in the age of onagers and things like that, where whatever you put down can generally just be safe. Mm-hmm. Um, like yep. the change to him has made made the fleet itself less flexible, maybe. Um, like you can no longer do it as they call it the coward radis where he's just on a ship sailing away he's on the radis pleasure right. yacht and two yeah. gr 75s just duck in hoping to drop off drop off the kids at the pool um but yeah it's just and I, like a lot of people are not going with them in tournaments but i don't think that's because of its power <clears> level <throat> i think that's more because he's he can be very he can be a little bit boring to play yeah it he is a one trick pony and unless you are facing someone that is confident and knows how to counter it it's almost like you put down a really good radis build and you almost know the outcome of the game yep. unless you really screw it up somehow so and and there are definitely ways to screw it up. A fighter screen can immensely help your opponent kind of yes. control where he is. Yeah. The fact if you if you're facing Radis, spread out. Yes, like, absolutely. Yeah, don't bunch up. <laughs> if you Force allow him to go to one area, yeah. yeah, and then then you can move that ship normally to at least take less damage. Yes. Um. And it, it's just don't let yourself be forked classic chess do not yep. let yourself be forked yes um but by that giant queen coming out of the out of the out of the drop ship so you've read us at a four i've met a one next is everybody's favorite puzzle admiral sato <laughs> yes i really enjoy sato um I like him just lore wise. I liked him in Star Wars Rebels. One of my friends, he's one of he just loves the characters. So every time we play Rebel or Armada, he likes playing Sato. And I I didn't I put Sato actually near to the bottom half because it's very situational. You have to build specifically specifically to make him work. And he can be easily countered and neutralized. But I put him at a seven. And I almost put him higher, but I was, I was just thinking that unless you specifically build towards it and your opponent doesn't know how to counter, basically stop your squads from moving forward. Because um, if your opponent stops your squads from moving forward, Sato's neutralized and you just stay at distance and you don't get any benefit whatsoever. I yeah. think he's easily countered, but if he's not, he can be very effective for getting some long range, you know, APTs or uh, concussion missiles going off or just high um damage black dice coming in that you normally wouldn't get so i would have rated him higher but i've also rated him a seven um i think the i think the change to the black dice the ordinance um upgrades has really messed him up not being able to double arc um he's still played right he's still terrifying and there's a lot rebels can do to kind of get around that whole locking the squads down you've got your uh tycos for example yes janors yeah. uh janors is still good yeah, it's still and useful so, intel did get you know nerfed so to speak mm-hmm. but it it needed to be fixed and oh, gotcha. uh you can still you can still play with intel well and just do it smartly and still be able to get people free yeah, and the MC seventy five is, I think, one of the ships that keeps Sato in there. Oh yeah, because it's just oh yeah, <laughs> it can just throw out so many black dice if they get close to it. It doesn't yeah. mind kiting, but it also doesn't mind getting in there and mixing it up and getting out really quick. So, uh, with my experimentation with them, like, and I loved hammerheads. I did the four hammerheads thing with them. But oh, yeah. MC seventy. Oh yeah, I I played a lot of Sado, and he's very difficult to make work. Um, but I think it's it's a case of you have to build with the the knowledge that those black crits are the icing on the cake. Sometimes yeah, you can't, you can't just, expect them. They're the reward. They're not yep. the 
you're not your, they're not your foundation at least the long range ones and then when you get in close you're just throwing five black dice out of right a, out yeah. of an arc and going ah this is this is kind of fun and hilarious <laughs> right but, yeah i would no. say, yeah very very it's it's a high skill to play but if you can do it well sato can be very powerful but it's definitely not an easy build to play for sure no it is definitely not um so garm bell iblis what do, what are your thoughts on on garby we'll talk about a uh, commander who if you would have asked me three months ago would have been last he is now actually number five for me the ability to pick the rounds now that you want to get those tokens and i i love having tokens and to be able to do even like half commands and control the battlefield and so many cards now require tokens to refresh i think commanders that can give out tokens especially when you want and what you want are is very powerful and since you can pick his turns now i think gar garm is number five for me he's right in the middle he shot up the list pretty high for me all right my keyboard suddenly decides to die but he's four <laughs> for me um just i've been i i ended up um basically using something like dumpster fire and we had smitty on to talk about dumpster fire um, um are you familiar with the list uh, i'm not familiar with that list no but i am familiar with the term dumpster fire <laughs> yeah so basically it, it it's like four activations some squads minimal upgrades and garm um and obviously smitty did really well with it. i've tried it out and done okay with it but it wasn't really a fault of the list it was more me being an idiot at times um, it also sounds out like require a lot of practice to play that kind of list yeah it definitely does um which is kind of makes it the the more rewarding but like i'd agree the changes to allow them to do any round are fantastic and were really the right change yeah um because yeah it's just with ahsoka and everything else um it just makes it so that like you you're always have some options each round yes. which is fantastic yes um but yeah no for me he's number four and he just he's so much fun like you you there's there's never a, like sometimes you're just locked in and you're like that assault frigate's going off the table in two rounds i've messed up it's just right. gone. Like I, 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 I've had that happen on one or two occasions, but with that list, nothing's ever. Sh you're never totally screwed um, until 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 it goes down. But yeah, no, Garm is definitely he's definitely a, a, a player, that, a, an admiral that takes a bit of practice. But once you do, there's a there's a lot of rewards for doing it. Um, and I, I just love I love having flexibility with my commanders and he provides fantastic flexibility now to modify on the fly. Yep. But uh, what you got? Kraken then. The red headed stepchild of uh, of 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 1.0, where the only list I think I saw him <laughs> with was like five CR 90s and uh a bunch of yt 2400s and that did quite well i think there was an that, that old... actually sounds like a riken list to me <laughs> that brings back nightmares of the riken zombie list before that got nerfed but uh kraken unfortunately i put kraken last on number 11 and one of it is that i've actually never ran kraken and i've never played against kraken so this is all theory crafting for me when i was thinking about them and it is nice to have a whole fleet where you can get that obstruction potential if you're going fast, but I just am not, I don't see where I would pick um, him over any other rebel commander if I'm building a rebel fleet, unless I specifically wanted, I'm going to try out Kraken. And I can't think of any list I would make as a rebel where I wouldn't want another commander instead. That's why he's last for me. So he's number three for me. Um, and this is just through experience of mm -hmm. people explaining more than actually playing. The 1.5 James needs to play backlog is right. uh, is massive at this stage. But uh, basically, 
I've tried Mothma and she's doing nothing. Like mm. she's doing very little to nothing with the 1.5 changes if you're not taking your ship straight in. And generally, if you're a ship that Motma can make use of, you're not taking your ship straight in. Whereas Kraken is always on. Uh, True. Now, you probably don't want to take too many hammerheads. You probably want the CR-90s. But um, I was, uh, we were talking to, um, Truthiness has been doing quite well in the World Cup. And he was on about like the engine techs on CR-90s. <laughs> always going fast and right, still having yeah. three bands of where he can land. So yeah, that actually sounds terrifying. And the amount of survivability I'm getting out of CR 90s and MC 30s compared to the old edition, but throwing Kraken on top of that, it just like he's fleet wide, he's a decent effect and Salvo is a thing and separate ships are a thing. So yeah, that's like, very true. At long range against a munificent, it goes from let's say you shoot it twice. So and it's burning at salvo. It's got you double arced. If you get in that position, and never get in that position, uh, by no. the way, <laughs> viewers you don't want uh, that. You go from no. getting hit with nine red dice, nine red dice to getting hit with five with Kraken. And that's that's a bit fantastic. It is. And uh, now that you're explaining it to me, th th again, this is, comes from inexperience, never facing him and never running him. That uh, now that you're explaining it out, it makes a lot more sense of how you could run him and be effective and be very effective. Yeah, I actually need to get him on the table. Um, I definitely need to get him on the table and 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 try this out. But for now. Just because of, of, of how he interacts and how other rebels, admirals, have gone plummeted down the table. Um, he is, he is, he's for me the number three. Um, now, how about our favorite bearded general? How are you feeling about Dudana? I still love Dudana. And I know he is, you could say he's very vanilla, he's very basic. And you could say he's a relic from the very first days of Armada. But even despite all that, I still hate seeing a D Dodonna fleet across from me playing as Empire. And he's still so cheap. And even if you're not teching towards him, the fact that late game when everybody's shields are down and those hits are coming in and my opponents can be able to pick from four cards when those crits come up, my contains are all spent. Uh, even when you don't tech towards him, the Donna is very powerful. And uh, I have him ranked as number two. And um, the few times that I've run him, I've always loved it. And every time I face the Donna list, I always regret it and always goes bad for me. And uh, I know it's not as strong as it used to be where you could really, really tech hard into it. But even without teching into it, the Donna is still great and he's cheap. And I don't think you'll ever regret taking the Donna, even if you just want to throw him in a list. Yeah. So I have I have him at six. Um, I probably would have had him a small bit higher. The problem I have is is Agate is mm. probably does more for a fleet than than Dudana a lot of the time because you can turn whatever you want into if you need a ship to stick around for a turn or two, and it, it's not an MC thirty. Um, you can throw her on there. Or if you want three survivable MC-30s, you've got Ammunition on one, Foresight on another, Agate on another. Um, True. Do, yep. Dulana's effect is still really solid. He's still, if you don't want to do Agate and you just want a, an Admiral who goes in, he is one of the two cheap options. Yes. Um, and his effect is, is, when it goes off, it's fantastic. You know, you're, there's generally no terrible crit you're pulling out of four no you're always you going to have a good option out of four for sure <laughs> and like for sure this is the thing if you want to build um if you want to build a new player 
something that has like Battle of Endor. Who else are you going to go with? Well, you're going to go, or sorry, a Battle of Yavin. You're going to go right. with Dudana. Of course. You're going to yeah. put in Luke. You're going to put in yep. Biggs, Wedge, and Dutch, and just have the new player exp- pop a critical into your ISD and pull it straight, and see the giant. through the shields with Luke and uh, then you'll hook him on the game forever. <laughs> exactly. Um, but no, he's still like the amount of Dudana fleets I built uh, before Agate was fantastic. And he's still decent. He's just, he's just got competition. And I think yeah. he's maintaining a six for me because again, other rebel admirals just fallen a bit um correct yeah that's true uh so then we have madine mr go fast yes uh this is another one i've ranked low he's number 10 second to last and it's and this is also similar to as a result of my play style i tend to use navigates a lot and I plan towards using navigate commands a lot. So I don't feel like I need a commander that gives me na- navigate benefits. I feel that's almost like a waste for me. And it can, he can actually be very effective if you want to just maybe like just do tokens, nav tokens with commsnet and the other commands, and then still get, get that maneuverability. I just don't feel how I would put him in a list where I would be comfortable changing my base, my baseline of how I like to run commands, et cetera, and run my ships to where he would actually be useful for me in any fleets that I might put together. Yeah. He, he just seems so restrictive. Um, yeah. I don't understand why he didn't get more of a points drop. Like you compare him to Jurgerod. Like, right. And yeah. this Jurgerod's <laughs> exactly. cheaper. Doesn't require yep. the commands now. I like yep. gave a similar effect to rebels. I don't know how well it will work because on the smaller ships, like Medine can do some crazy stuff with CR nineties. Oh yeah, absolutely oh, yeah. crazy stuff. But I'm just not convinced it's good. Uh, it's good enough. Um, it's just. It's just, he just requires you to always be navigating uh, a little bit. And I don't know, I just don't feel like the the Medine fleets are flexible. I know some people have found with assault frigates, he does fantastic things with them, but I don't know. I find that even if you're going to be doing navigate dials, you're already getting the, the extra click. I don't. I don't, I've never had an instance where I'm like, I have a dial, I'm getting my extra click, I wish I had another one. And if I'm running a fleet where I wish I had another one, I'm usually running a take evasive action fleet command. And it's just one of those where it seems, he seems redundant to me, based, yeah. at least based on my play style, the way I, I usually play. MC 30s at speed four can that definitely would be, make use of That would be useful, yes, yes, because their, their maneuverability drops way off on speed four. Now, I can definitely see a list with that when you're running at least two, maybe even three MC-30s. You've got Maydean, you're running Navs. That makes them hyper-maneuverable at speed four, even at three. And and now you're running MC-30s that you can't get away from no matter what you do. Yeah. So that's actually a very legitimate list there. I, I think like there are, there are other admirals who's cheaper who maybe do a bit more. Again, yeah. the, the Kraken yeah. thing is probably better mon mothma is probably better anything that's keeping them alive because again you you may not want to be going at speed four you may want to be able to just drop in uh and and stay in somebody's front arc um and you know uh, again he he, he's just a bit too much uh he's just too restrictive and i think he's too expensive for what he does yeah Um, i agree the zombie lord, General Reiken, Reiken, however you want to pronounce right. it. Right. Well, we'll just keep counting up from the bottom. I've got him at number nine. And uh, if you would have asked me within the first couple of years for Armada, he'd be number one. <laughs> but uh, he did need an adjustment when they did errata his card uh, years ago. I don't think it was adjusted too hard, but I it's now I find it, it it's, I'm not sure how useful he is anymore his ability, how much. Well, 
I, I, yeah, it's one of those where, again, it's just an experience now after his, because I never saw him after the update. I've never played against him after the update. Um, I never played him against him with the new rules and I never tried him with the new rules. So it's a lot of this is again, just my ignorance on how well he can work with his current rules to be effective. The thing is, he's like 34 points and- Oh yeah, and the, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> this is the thing, your virus is gone. Yeah. Uh, like your virus is simply not good enough. Um, in terms of in in terms of building a fleet around it. So if you make Yvaris the centerpiece and you spend 34 points on him, you have like spent you spent like close to a fifth of your fleet cost yep. on pieces that don't do as much as they did. Right. And you're limited in the amount of aces you can bring. So then you've got You've probably still got bigs and sh- bigs and um, Jan Ors in there, mm-hmm. but it's a case of, and I think I might have referred to Jan as Shara at some point in this video. So if I did, I apologize, everybody. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's just for me. He's he's ten, and I'm just like, I don't know what I want to do, what I'd want to do with him. Because if you want to do with him, you want lots of stuff but he's more expensive now so that yeah. makes it harder yeah. he's like there's it, like he's potentially too expensive and again i have not played against him in a long while i didn't even play yeah. against him towards the end when he was good because nobody really wanted to take him um because he was a expensive and b you know, it, it's it's counterintuitive. There may still be a place for him. Like he may turn around and win worlds and whenever that happens again. But right now it just feels, rather than any empirical evidence on this one, he feels yeah, like he's just... Here. I think uh, if they reduce his points down to the 20s, but kept, kept his modified, his new rules the same, I think he'd be much more attractive. Um, I don't think he, he needed to... Yeah. But it's, I, I, it's still it's still off, but it's not as bad as how expensive he is. I, now. I, th- I think twenty might be. Yeah, I think you might end up with so much spam lists you'd never see the light of day. But the CR ninety Rambo thing being fixed by the engine techs change, things like that have, have all been all been nerfs in addition to the change to the card. So I think thirty. Yeah. Oh, I think thirty points is probably too expensive 20 it's definitely might be a compounding pushing. effect <laughs> yep um then everybody's favorite generic vanilla flavored she'll go in anywhere admiral mm-hmm. our, our cyborg friend agate how do you rate her yes i love cursed agate uh but i i have her at six which uh might seem low to some people but i put her there because i liked other admirals higher and the reason why I put her in the middle is because on her own, she's only affecting one ship. Now, you can obviously build around that to make a really durable fleet. But the one ship you put her on, especially if you do like a Starhawk, uh, especially a Starhawk, especially with a title, and basically you get defense tokens like a Super Star Destroyer. Mm-hmm. And even just on MC-80s, on an MC-75, the ship she's on makes it super valuable, super tough to kill. But since it's only valued to one ship and not a whole fleet, that's why I kind of have her in the middle. Yeah, I have her at a five. If actually Yavaris was still around and working, um, I think I might actually have her higher because uh, I had great fun putting her on an unkillable Yavaris. Oh, I can't. Yeah, that's... Never even thought of doing that. That sounded uh, incredible. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's like Riken with a points drop. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was messing around with that in uh, uh, before 1.5. And yeah, she just goes everywhere. There have been fleets with her on a CR90B that have done quite well. Not my fleets, but crazier fleets. Right. Um. She can go in anything. She doesn't care. If you have a f- list that needs an admiral um, before it was Dudana, but like she's, for me, she's five. Um, I think like the tournament results are bearing out that loads of people put her in stuff and then loads of people also get wrecked playing her. 
right. um so she's going into some lists without a plan but no she's just solid she's just good but do have an idea what you're using her for yeah, or at I've, least the idea for your fleet should be good yeah exactly and i've used her only a couple times because i don't play rebels that much mm -hmm. but the couple times i've used her i've loved it and they've both been on starhawks i did the classic i get on a starhawk take a title you get six defense tokens and i make this almost unkillable ship this just giant target but then i have all these other ships around her that are basically my killers the starhawk yeah. is not meant to be my damage output it's the distraction and usually the two times i did it my opponent went for the starhawk and ignored my other ships and i was you know just able to clean up with my small ships while she just sat there and took all the hits yep. and both times it didn't die i mean i think when i survived on one health at the end but it was just enough to focus all the attention but i built around it and was not counting on the starhawk to do anything except take damage and that was it so the rule with the Starhawk, ladies and gentlemen, is if you go for the king, you better not miss. Exactly. So do your maths. <laughs> yeah. You have to you have to focus, focus, focus on a Starhawk, especially a tricked out one. You have yeah. to commit to it. You can't change your mind in the middle of the game. You have to decide at the start of the game, all right, I'm going for the Starhawk and I'm going hard. Because if yep. you don't do it any other way, you're not killing it. Yeah. Or if, if you know you can't do it, ignore it. Ignore it, yeah. Completely ignore if it. If you get out of position <laughs> and that Starhawk is somewhere where suddenly it's a bit safer than you thought, then just clean the rest of the fleet and hope yes, for the best. and just leave it or alone. Go for the objective <laughs> and run. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, it's a... Um, and, 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 yeah, it, Starhawk is just... It's, it's a fantastic ship. Um, I love it. I love playing against it. I love playing with it. it just, I, I just like the challenge of playing against it deciding am i going to go for it or do you need to play around it and try to change my game plan up yep oh no tis 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 tis, tis a, a a definite it's a thing so next we have everybody's favorite princess uh mm -hmm. leah organa um what are your thoughts ben so i love leah especially with her points drop but she's still ranked pretty low for me she's ranked at number eight and I wanted to put her higher. I really did because for the points drop, she's very valuable. I liked running her. A couple of my friends have ran her. The, uh, the issue I have though, is that she's very restrictive. Um, that you can only do one command to get her ability. And I like stacking tokens on my ships to do, to do multiple commands in a turn. Yeah. And you can't do that with Leia. So it makes it very restrictive with what you're doing. And you kind of have to really narrow your focus on how you want to run your fleet with Leia. Yeah. And, and it's the restriction as well, which kills it for me. Um, yeah. And like, uh, Geek 19 uh, runs with pocket carriers and does a whole load of work to make her work. But I don't know, it just, it seems a bit too restrictive. I definitely need to try her out with the points drop, but yeah, it's that it's that restriction. It's like, yeah. does she really need it? Because um, I feel like she doesn't. Um, like you do, you don't have a similar restriction on on Tarkin, but again, he's restricted in in other ways. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just if it wasn't there, I would definitely rank her higher. I, and it's like. With rebels, you, do you really want to be doing the same command all the time? If you do, surely you still want to be able to make use of the token suite. Yeah. And if if the command that you're doing all the time, surely that's probably nav if it's across the fleet. If you're not using anything else, at which point, why are you not using Medin? Things like that. But yeah, yeah. she's she's number eight for me as well. Um, so then we'll reach our last rebel admiral in Mon Mothma. Peacenik herself. Yes, and I only have one slot left, and that's the number one slot. She's my number one rebel commander. I love Mon Mothma, and I I was starting to rethink it when you were talking to me about Kraken, and rethinking when it was being explained to me. I was like, oh, okay, I can see how Kraken might be better and be more useful, but I'm still, you know, thinking of uh, Mon Mothma running MC-30s and assault frigates up in people's faces and getting into medium range. And uh, 
I think 1.5 makes her very strong. But again, as you were when you were talking about Kraken and comparing him to her, you can't be at play a long distance orbiting fleet. It'd be better to do Kraken. But if you're planning getting in someone's face with ships that have evade, I still. And a lot of times when I play as rebels, I find that I kind of want to do that, especially with MC30s, because you want to get those black dice going off. So I still find her extremely valuable, extremely powerful to keep your small ships alive, your evading ships alive. So hard to deal with um, as an opponent, as an, an Imperial player. It's so hard for me to deal with a Mon Mothma fleet that's teched towards her. And if I'm not teched towards getting lots of accuracies, a lot goes down. So that's why I've got her at number one. Uh, I was rethinking a little bit when you talked to me about Kraken, so maybe that might adjust later. But for now, I'm going to keep Mon Mothma as my number one Rebel Commander. So I have her as nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that... and, and maybe it's just I can't <laughs> build for her properly. I just, I don't know. I'm not sure how good the effect is. Um, but then again, I'm usually staring down the face of a Star Destroyer or something mad, uh, at which point, at which point she's... Um, She's in a bit of trouble with the accuracies. She doesn't do anything at extreme range versus the onagers. Mm, and it just feels enough. like you're kind of getting a mini Mothma already yeah. um, at the moment. And I'm not sure how much you she is. Uh, but again, maybe that's, I just need to find the fleet that she works in. You know. But also, you know, as I was saying, you were starting to, as you were talking it out, comparing her with Kraken, I just want to go back to this. This does, a lot of this comes down on the Rebel side, an experience on my part, just the lack of play time with it. And I've played against it quite a bit, but limited games playing against it uh, in 1.5. So, you know, I'm imagining, you know, I might want to try Mon Mothma fleet with MC-30s and an Assault Frigate and even CR-90s and just go right at somebody and to see how well she can tank it but it could be it could be disastrous and playing with kraken instead going high speed could be better yep. it might actually be better so and the the funny thing is you could always to do a starhawk with the amnesty title and two mc30s oh, if you're it, feeling that, crazy. Just, that that just yeah that <laughs> actually that just sounds disgusting now <laughs> a starhawk that can cancel two dice at medium range are you kidding me <laughs> Tis, tis, tis definitely something to try. Tis yeah. definitely something yeah. to try. So with our top admirals, Ben has Mon Mothma and I have Radis. <laughs> yep. Um, and with our bottom, Ben has Kraken and I have Medine. So if you want to comment on the list, comment on what's your list or what's your top and bottom in, in the comments below. Um, you know, we'd be definitely interesting to find out what you all think. Um, but yeah, uh, so this is part one. We're going to do the other part on the downsizer channel um, with the Imperial Admiral. So if you want to find out what we think about those lads and lassies, uh, join. Uh, there'll be a link to basically Ben's channel down below, as well as the downsize at Facebook page. Uh, Group, which is the best way to follow your channel outside of YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. Is there any anything else you want to point people at, Ben? Uh, the only thing I would say is the uh, face the uh, Krabic Facebook group for Star Wars Armada. If you haven't gone there, I just recently discovered that a couple months ago when I made this channel, and I really enjoy the engagement. Lots of new players on there asking questions. The community is very nice. A lot of veteran players answering questions for new players. And if you like primarily using Facebook, I'll definitely check out the Star Wars Armada Facebook channel or Facebook page that's run by Krabuk. It's very active and you'll get a lot of helpful feedback and see lots of things going on in there. Awesome. And if you're looking for good battle reports, definitely go to Downsize at the YouTube channel. There are lots of different size battle reports as well. So we've got one or two over, over 400 points. So if you like those epic battles, Downsize it is definitely the place to go. Anyway, listen, thank you so much for joining me, Ben. We'll see you yes, in one minute you. on your channel. Yes, exactly.